Welcome back to the other side of weight loss, ladies. So I'm excited because I have a very lovely guest talking about movement and many other things. I know we're just going to get into so much stuff because we see eye to eye already. I can see this on many things. My guest today is Ellen Barrett. Is a, she is a well-known mind body movement instructor with blockbuster videos like crunch, fat burning Pilates, the Yogini workout, and prevention's flat flat belly series. She's the author of four wellness books, including her latest 28 Days Lighter Diet, which delves into specifically women and weight release. With Yoga Pilates, ACE Fitness, and Institute of Integrative Nutrition Certifications, Ellen is helming the now age of empowered health by bridging movement, diet, and lifestyle. So welcome, Ellen. Hi. Thanks you're just for that like nice and I know. Well, you're just like <laughs> the soul sister here with all these like, yeah. We because yeah. right away I saw in her little thing that she talks about weight release and how she doesn't call it weight loss. And I'm like, oh, I like this woman already. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Ellen, before we right before we got onto this conversation, you had said to me like, you're at this age now where you're just finally understanding women. And just what, it, you know, you've been a mother, you're, you're, you're just getting to that. And I feel the same way, but I would love for you to tell the audience just kind of what it is that you do and how did you get here? Yeah. Well, so thank you. I, yes. I, I where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I actually started as a tennis player. I was a high school, you know, junior tennis player, played tennis in college, always loved movement, always loved exercise, didn't think it was a chore, never got that memo that exercise was a pain in the butt, you know, never got that. Like I always thought, whoa, I get to move. So oh, I got the memo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think, well, I have a theory on that. I think a lot of people okay. get it in gym class when they're forced to do something. Yeah. I think also women particularly get very fatigued and over like, like, overburdened with other things. And the last thing they actually need is to move because they need more rest. Mm -hmm. So there's like a lot of theories with every, with, you know, with that, but, um, you know, I just always love movement. I like to inspire people to move. I, I felt like it dropped me into my body and I felt like it was such medicine to like be here now. And so, um, you know, when I started to just, I chose this as a career because what else was I going to do? <laughs> I really, I really need to like have that movement. I need to be dropped in. And I say dropped in because we have this like cerebral world where we're thinking about things and we're not really feeling things. And it's very apparent with like how people choose to eat. Um, you know, if you go to a restaurant with someone and they're thinking about what they should order instead of like asking their body what it really wants. Oh, and yeah. we, we think it's like the body's going to want like a milkshake, but not all, not, that's not really the, what the body wants. Like reactively, the body might want that every once in a while, but really intrinsically the body wants nourishment and the body will tell you, it'll guide you, but we're too busy not noticing. So, um, so yeah, so years of teaching classes and um, just building up my reputation as a, a, a trainer and instructor, um, accumulating knowledge from a lot of different methods. Like I really love yoga, but I'm not two feet in yoga. I really love Pilates, but I'm not fully there. I really just like movement. I like mindful movement. So I study it all and I incorporate it all. And, um, and yeah, it's been a long journey. And, um, I feel like every day I've, I've gained wisdom and I've experienced things in my own personal life that help me be wiser. Um, so I get it now. And when I was 20 something with ponytail on top of my head, I don't think I, I don't think I really understood the struggle that some women had and, um, just the setbacks that people could face and, uh, the sort of the 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 ebbs and flows of life and energy and now I get it. <laughs> I got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Just talking to the women like myself who I was never like 
oh, I love exercise. I, you know, maybe it was because I was undiagnosed with hypothyroidism, which I see that all the time with women right now, which is they're really, truly super tired and it's so hard for them to, to get up and do something. Right. But I did find that when I found yoga, I could do it. It didn't matter how tired I was, I could do it. So is that because, do you think, because it was mindful movement? And can you tell us what mindful movement is? Yes, it's really, that's really interesting. So mm-hmm. yoga and mindful movement actually give you more energy back. They open uh. you, they open you to receive energy through breath and through getting rid of tension in your body that's actually eating up energy and wasting your energy. Um, And they also settle your mind, which gives you a real calm energy about yourself. So that's the big difference between sort of, you know, overall exercise and mindful movement, because mindful movement will actually give you a lot back. You're not depleting you're not like, oh, I'm burning a billion calories. I'm beating myself up. You're, it's not that. It's about restoring your energy and you actually absorb more. And it's, it's this paradox, right? Because you're, you're you know, making the effort to go to class and you're moving and you might break a sweat and you might have challenge, but then you leave the class and you're like, feel like a million bucks. And that's how you know what mindful movement is, is because you actually don't feel depleted. You feel enhanced. And breath totally plays a huge role in that mindset, huge role. I personally think barefoot is the key too. It grounds you and just gets you more fully engaged in your body, united. So for sure, I think women that have thyroid issues and fatigue, chronic fatigue, all that stuff, find mindful movement because, you know, it's not, it might not be a full on cure, but it will re- give you some energy and it can keep you going. And so what falls under the category of mindful movement when it comes to different types of exercise? Well, I think mind body movement, like yoga, Pilates, martial arts. Oh, it's, martial it's, arts. Yes. I would have yes. thought that. Yes, you're right. You know what, any, anything that has a really breathing, breathing, breathing is the first, like the first act, right? Mm. It's the primordial movement. So if they cue breathing really well and they spend a little time on breath that's a good sign (laughs) and then because I mean I I remember taking I told the story to to a few people that when I was in college my roommate was in ROTC which is sort of an army boot camp club and I remember being like "Woo! I want to go to your 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 boot camp at five o'clock in the morning and I, you know, woke up, crack it on, walked over to the field house and I was tortured. Like, I was like, this is not, and I had been, a, I was a, ten, I was a tennis player, collegiate tennis player. And I was like, this is like, whoa, um, you know, there was no breathing cueing and there was a lot of yelling and kind of like some like, you know, sort of smack talk. And it, demo- it made me get tighter and tighter and, and more stressed out. So my breathing was shallower and shallower and shallower. And And I was so irritated at the end of that morning. And it was a real epiphany for me. And it stayed with me all these years because I was like, whoa, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something that doesn't have that effect because that's a, I knew that was something I wanted to stay away from. So, you know, breath is really important and it sounds crazy. And when I was 25, I never talked about breath and, um, and I either. Yeah. And at the time, at the time, we weren't talking about it anyway, you know? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So it's become a lot more um, integrated into movement for sure, which is a good sign. We're yes. see, like, everything isn't all falling apart in our world. We're actually gaining something. In our world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I would think like Qigong and Tai Chi, yeah, would they so be under good. there too? Yeah. Okay. They're so good. And you know what? I really think like um, even ballet if it's done for fitness and conditioning purposes and not performance is really intelligent. And it, it really, you know, you really see the whole body work as a one unit, you know, it's not like compartmentalized stuff. And I think that could be great also, but I think a walk in the woods when you're really getting into that feel good in the moment mindset is it can be really Zen. It can be really mindful. So Um, so it's a fine line. Like I, you know, it's a fine line. I think any, 
any movement can be amazing. It's really the attitude and the mindset behind it. Right. I remember like 10 years ago, and probably more than that now, when I was suffering really badly with weight loss resistance and I couldn't lose the weight. I'd had my my first baby and it was just like the weight just kept coming on. And I joined the local boot camp. <laughs> And I, and I got a personal trainer that just kicked my butt and I was going to these boot camps like a couple days a week and going to the personal trainer on the other days. Like I was working out harder than I'd ever worked out before. And I hated it. I really did. I hated every minute of it because it was so hard and I felt horrible, but I was forcing my body to do it thinking this is what I need. And continued gaining weight and I finally had my hormones checked and my cortisol was so low which basically was telling me that I was extremely stressed out and you know I didn't I just never thought that I was I did I just thought oh hey I'm living well like everybody else is living even though I was a single mom running my own business like trying to make right. ends meet. and I quit all that all of that, like the boot camp, the personal trainer, and I started doing yoga for the first time. And I started doing hot yoga and I would go like three days a week, four days a week. And I did that for two years without doing anything else besides like just walking or hiking, something like minor. And it's so funny because in those two years, as my hormones healed, my body finally lost weight and it was not yeah. from the boot camp. <laughs> right. But it just goes to show. And I, I, had, I felt like I had to heal my system. And yoga became such an amazing tool for that. So I've heard the story a billion times. <laughs> and I honestly think a lot of women have to go through it to know yes. it firsthand. They like, you know it. You don't, you don't think it. You know it. You know that that was a waste of time or you had to move through that to figure it out. That is, I feel like I've said this so many times and, and some people really disagree with me, like the CrossFit people and, um, you know, some, some other personal trainers that I'm actually really good friends with don't agree with me when I say this, but that no pain, no gain is a real lie. Mm -hmm. And you, you want to nurture yourself to wellness, not abuse yourself to wellness. And you have to think of wellness and not fitness. And, um, and you know, it should never be torture. I, you know, I go to the dentist twice a year and that's it. And if I had to go every day, I would never go back to the dentist. I'd be like, forget it. I will lose all my teeth. I don't need to be, I don't need to have teeth. I would say yeah. that because I just don't enjoy that at all. It's torture. And a lot of people think that about movement. They think, oh God, it's not for me. It is, that is torture. And, um, and it's been misrepresented a lot. And, uh, and then you have people that are really fake and they're like, this is the best, you know? And that's 1% of the population loves that like intensity, you know? And they're gonna be, you know, Marines or something, you know what I mean? But 99% of the population really, they, you know, they wanna feel good, they wanna fit into their clothes and have energy and not need to take a nap, you know? Yeah. Like I really, I, I really said, when I first had my son, I remember being like, I just craved naps. I, and, and as soon as my head, like I never slept upright. I never slept on a, in a chair or a couch. And suddenly I was like falling asleep everywhere. I remember falling asleep in Shavasana and yoga at the end of yoga <laughs> yeah. and being like, that has never happened to me. Being so embarrassed after like 20 years of yoga, I've never fallen asleep. And then my, I have like a three month old and I'm falling asleep everywhere. And it was like, I am so exhausted. The, the depth of exhaustion, which you don't even ever know until you have like a baby that keeps you up all night. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, even in college, when you really struggle with getting enough sleep, you still have that solitude at some point you can carve out. But anyway, yeah. I digress. But yeah, so I do think it's like that people don't think it's too good to be true that you can feel good and look good and you don't yeah. have to battle. Yeah. And yeah. it's also to those people that you're talking like the hardcore CrossFitters and these people that are doing this to their bodies and it's not, you know, working, I guess the way that like, right. I, I see a lot of women that are doing the CrossFit that are, or marathon running, right? They're training right. Like crazy to be running in a marathon. And the bottom line is they're doing it because they want to lose weight. Like that's really underlying all of it is, yes, it makes them feel good when they're doing it, but the reason they're doing it is because they want to lose weight. And it's, if it's not working, 
it's very hard to tell those people you could be making yourself gain more weight. Because I really believe that's what was happening to me was I continued gaining weight because of the pressure I was putting on my body because it was, it was done. And the last thing it needed was for me to be tr- pushing like that all the time and wearing it out and creating inflammation. Totally. I mean, like, I think that there's more benefit in a, running a 5K than running a marathon for the human body. Like people yeah. think more is better and that's yeah. not true. Yeah. Um, and also like you, you get that energy, you feel good, you break a sweat, you've gotten like 30 minutes of, of really steady cardiovascular, you've, you know, listen to the birds and nature or whatever you've done. And then you go home and you have a productive day. And if you're training for a marathon, it's like this thick black cloud hanging over your head. The whole time you're training, you're meeting up with people, you're plotting courses, you are injured, you're like shin splints, you're, you know, ice bags on your knees, whatever you're doing, that's a sign that it's too extreme. And of course, there are people that really thrive with that. They do. It's, yes. It's Same with CrossFit. Everything. There's people that super yeah, yeah. thrive and they look amazing. And I follow all those women on Instagram because I'm like, gosh, I wish I could look like them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they, and they, they, they're, they like it. You yes. know, I think, that's like, do you like it? Like ask yourself, yeah. feel like, feel like, feel what, what is feeling good for me? You know, just like with that, my ROTC boot camp experience when I was like 20, I remember being like, whoa, this is like, it was like a blinking red light of caution. Like, don't do that. And I think people really are, are robots and they're not really asking themselves. They're just, or like, they're like, this is what, you know, Madonna does. So I have to do it. You know, this is, you know, and it's like, no, you, you have to feel your way through even with, with everything, not just what you're doing, but when you're doing it, um, how long, um, you know, sometimes, you know, after work is really rough for people. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it'd be better if you could do it before work. Some people that's torture. They can't do it. It sets them way back to set their alarm and go that early. So you really have to feel it out. Like be intuitive with yourself and trust that. Trust your intuition. You know better than, yeah, you know better than anyone else about you. And so we give that we give like the, we, we give that away. We give our own power away when we don't really go with it. So mm-hmm. I, I, I also think like that's true with food and it's true with, with rest and balancing your life. You have to feel what you need and then trust it and then pursue it. And like, I think women are like, oh, I could never, I could never go uh, all day like a month without working out, or I could never, you know, you know, whatever, eat dinner so late at night or whatever they, whatever they say, it's like, well, what do you feel? You know, it's Mm -hmm. really important. It really is because we have it set in our head. Like, oh my gosh, if I don't exercise, you know, I'm going to gain weight. It's going to be horrible. I just had a woman in my, my membership group. Who's like, oh, I have a knee. I had knee surgery. I'm not going to be able to exercise Karen. Like, is that, am I, is this even going to work? And I'm like, oh yes, yes, it will. Like if all you can do is just get outside for a walk, that's fantastic. Don't worry. It's okay. Like wait till you feel, I said that I was like, wait till you feel that you you're capable of it. And I say that to my clients as well, that are, are not feeling good and they don't have the energy and it's like, okay, wait until you do like, just wait. Cause right. that, that will happen as your body changes and you get the right food in there. Your body's going to suddenly say, okay, I think I'm ready for movement. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so true. It's, that's like, you just, you know, you, yeah, that's so true with yeah. everything. With everything. Yeah. Yeah. So you say you use the term weight release. So tell me about why you use that instead of weight loss. Well, so I worked for uh, Weight Watchers for a a program with them. I did a, I did a walking, a home walking program with them. That was really fun. And I, you know, got involved with, I went to like, I worked with like real people from Weight Watchers and, um, and I did an audio walk and it was a very fun project. And this was, I don't know when it was, like maybe 2008, 2009. Anyway, that's when I started using weight release because I made the connection of like, I don't want to lose my car keys. I don't want to lose my baseball game. I don't want to lose my mind. I don't want to lose money. I realized that it was a really unconsciously, we don't, we move away from loss. We are striving to gain, you know, so 
I think release is such a softer, gentler term and subconsciously and consciously, it seems a little bit less daunting. Right. And it's not, woe is me, I lost, you know, and it's not, oh God, I have to lose. It's, I'm just going to let go. I'm yes. just going to let go and release. I don't need it. It doesn't serve me. I'm going to let it go. So I really thought it was a real game changer for, I have a few training clients that really were trying to re release weight. And I just kept on saying, you know, this is the term we need to use from here on out. And I do think it, it's a, it's happier. <laughs> and I, I think it's totally happy, but I also think it's just a less stressful phrase. So mm -hmm. I just try to use weight release whenever I can. Whenever it's, um, when I'm in charge, I'm like, wait, release. <laughs> it sounds more emotional to me like that it, uh -huh. it, in, in a good way, in the sense of like weight does come with this emotional, right. you know, weight to it. And when you say weight release, that's how I feel. It's like you're releasing that, that yeah. extra emotional weight, not just right. physical weight. I like it. Yeah. And you know, I'll tell you, it, rolls over into uh, other things in your life, like cleaning out your, your refrigerator and making your closet organized and taking a bunch of old furniture to Goodwill. You start releasing everything you don't want, not, yeah. just, not just fat on your body. Yeah. You might release water retention. It's, you know, that's another thing like, w you know, we, we don't realize like that number on the scale, it, you know, it's so, you know, it's so so many things, you know, your inches around your waist is so many things. You could have inflammation, you could have men, you know, menstrual cramps and you're bloated. You could have digestion issues. It's not you with fat. It's, it's weight retention. It's a lot of things. So think about your body as just releasing what you don't want, releasing yeah. what you don't need. And yeah, then, and even just going through the closets in the fridge, like you said, and just being oh, yeah. like, I'm going to release this. Like, it sounds cheesy, oh, yeah. but I love it. It's yeah. like, I'm going to release the cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because I, for, I really don't do this as much anymore, but I have two clients where I go to their houses and, um, and I remember when I was living in LA and in New York, I'd be in people's apartments and houses. And I remember being like, show me your junk drawer show me the junk drawer. And even in these little apartments in Manhattan, you'd open this drawer. That's like the first drawer on the left in the kitchen. And it has birthday candles and matches and that, you know, napkins and plastic baggies and keychains and keys from a house you lived in eight years ago. And yep. like, and then, and I would be like this next time I come see if you can clean this out. See, by next time I come, please try to clean this out. It's part of your, your cleansing process. It's part of your decluttering and releasing. And, um, and I remember being like, that drawer hangs over people's heads and they don't even realize it. You know, they always think, oh, I want to clean that drawer out. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. It's like that book. Did, have you read that Marie Kondo's oh, book? Oh, yes. Yeah. Totally. And like, that, she is so That's spot so perfect. Yeah. 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 She's Just, so perfect. Yeah. She really so, is. <laughs> yeah. I know, and it makes, and it actually relate. Do you see her? She is trim. She yeah. is not a slave to exercise. She's happy. She, she surrounds herself with just what she loves and needs and nothing else. And look at her. She's a, she's a fitness guru. That woman. Yes. <laughs> that Japanese woman <laughs> is a fitness guru <laughs> and yes. she doesn't even know it. Yeah. So if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it's the magic art of tidying up, right? That's yeah. What it's the, life, yeah. the life changing magic, the life changing tidying. magic. Yes. And it is, yeah. you're, you are releasing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it would be interesting if they would do a, they should, she should do a study of how many people end up losing weight and keeping it off once they go through her, her program. I know. <laughs> well, it's funny too. Lot. I bet so many people who have depression, because, you know, another thing when you are, when you have excess weight, it's a, it's like a lower vibration, you know, at, you know, talking very new agey here, but like depression and weight gain really coexist. They complement each other really well. Yeah. 100%. So if, yeah, if you get rid of the weight, suddenly you're lighter and you're, yeah. you're elevated, like your vibration is higher. It's, I do think there's a relationship to that. I mean, that's again, yeah. like we we're saying about you know, having all these years under my belt of being in this industry and I really get it. I see how it's all related. I see it with myself, but I see it with my clients too and my family members 
you know, when someone's struggling with a weight issue, a lot of times they're also emotionally not quite balanced either. They have to figure out that too. Yeah. I mean, this is what this entire podcast is. (laughs) Yeah. Right? It's the <laughs> right. other side of weight loss because everyone, <laughs> like majority of women still look to the diet and the exercise for everything, right? right. It, and it's always the high intensity cardio exercise and some sort of deprivation diet. And, right. you know, if we could just start wrapping our heads around the fact that there's so many different aspects to losing weight and you're going to fit into many of these different things that I talk about on this show. And this, what we're talking about today is a huge one. Depression and anxiety is the number one complaint. Like when I do a survey of, you know, what are your number one health issues almost across the board, it's anxiety and depression for almost everybody to some degree Mm -hmm. it's in there. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I mean, that's another thing. Like 25 years ago, it wasn't like it is now. Anxiety wasn't a yeah. word that we no. were using all the time. And, um, and it's, it's here and it's a really, really strong and it's happening to people younger and younger. And um, it's totally interfering with wellness. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a symptom of a lack of wellness. And you know, we need to address that. We have to calm down. And that's, again, mindful movement yeah. has that element where it really does sort of remedy um, that feeling like overwhelmed. You know, it can calm you down and pull you in the moment, which is a solution to a lot of things. Yeah, It really is. Why is it that women have to diet and exercise differently? Oh, right. Well, so, okay. So I wrote a book called The 28 Days Later Diet. And um, I co-authored it with my good friend, Kate Hanley. And we were um, working at Whole Living Magazine at the time. And we were discussing how um, the menstrual cycle is never part of how we pay attention to exercise or diet. We think like the, the menstrual cycle, we change all month long, but then our diet and our exercise wasn't adjusting. And I just thought that was a real disconnect as women were really disconnected from this cycle yes. of the month. And it's, it's, you know, we have higher energy days. We have low energy days. We have days where we need more warmth in our food. We have days where we need more hydration in our food. And, you know, the body's telling you all the time what it needs. And, um, and we're just pulled away from it. And also media pulls us away from it. Like you oh, have, yeah. you know, tampon commercials where women are skateboarding and wearing white. In their and white pants. Yeah. Yeah. And diving into a swimming pool. And you're just, and it's like the show, the, not only does the show go on, I feel amazing. And I'm like, I don't feel amazing. No. I don't know where, but you're taught <laughs> as a teenager, you see that and you're like, Oh, I just, you know, I just got to be a trooper and I just got to keep my workout going. And you know, it's just, it's all BS and it's it really, it's, it's really irritated women. So one thing is we realize is like in the middle of this cycle, you actually have a stronger appetite. You are actually consuming more calories. Your body temperature is up, you're warmer and you are actually hungrier. And we would beat ourselves up for being hungrier. Like we'd be like, Oh God, I'm so Why hungry. So Why am I so hungry? Meanwhile, with a baby, you'd be like, oh, she's hungry. Yay. She's <laughs> hungry. She- <laughs> Yay. So it's like, yeah. So we think of these like body signals as, you know, oh God, I'm hungry. Shame on me. And right. it's like, no, you, you know, it's like, would you say, oh, I have to pee. Shame on me. That's bad. No, mm-hmm. you, you don't do that. So it's like, we, we're not listening. We're not listening no, we're not. to the body. So women are really different because we have energy days that are through the roof and we can really do that Tai Bo class or go for a big run. And then we have days where we really need to do a gentle, peaceful yoga class and, you know, make sure we drink warm tea and, and relax and, and just lay a little low. And I just think we're not talking about it. We're not tuning into it. Even as a personal trainer, like I would always go one-on-one with my clients and we would always talk about menstrual cycles. We'd talk about fertility. We would be talking about, you know, reproductive health. You know, this person has, um, you know, fibroids and this person had cysts and this person had hysterectomy and I would like learn all of this. And I'd be like, wow, 
were really, and then, the, and then I'd still be, I trained this one woman who had had a really big surgery. And then she's like, I'm on for tomorrow. I'm on for tomorrow. And then I met her at her house and I was like, let's just stay here and do some light stretching and let's like not go crazy. And she's like, no, no. And she was so defying, defying her body all the time. And it's not about defying it. It's about using it as guidance and, and listening to it. So if we really listened to it and we felt the ebbs and flows of our body and we notice when, you know, right before you get your period, you do retain a little water, you should actually drink more hydrating foods and you should actually, you'll be a little sleepy, especially, you know, actually day one of your cycle, you actually need to rest a little bit more. Studies show that women want to sleep an hour to 90 minutes longer on that first day of the of menstrual cycle because you're wiped out you're losing nutrients you're losing yeah. so we're not we're but you know most women are like the show must go on i booked yeah. my spin class today and it's 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 doing more harm than good yeah. and movement should always benefit you it should never harm you there's a word in um yoga in Sanskrit called ahimsa. And it's one of the tenets in yoga. It's like the 10 commandments of yoga, but there's eight in yoga. And number one is ahimsa, which means do no harm, do no harm. And you're the only one who knows if you're doing harm, but if you're not tuning inward, you don't know if you're harming yourself until after the fact when it's too late. Yeah. So, you know, that's why meditation is crucial. Solitude is crucial. Turning off, you know, the media that's telling you to uh, get this out is there and run in your yeah, and pants. It, right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I get really passionate about it because I think women yes. have been screwed over. Women have really so been too. screwed over and it's caused them to, you know, spend all their energy trying to lose weight and they can spend their energy, you know, finding a cure for cancer or, you know, writing the great American novel. But yeah. So I do think that we've been distracted by weight loss and weight release. Yes. I, I've had a couple different speakers on the podcast talking about our cycles and kind of tuning in. And I had one woman talking about just like how even with your business or your life that there's certain type, certain times in your cycle that you're more creative, that you're yes, more yes. internal, that you're more outward, like that kind of thing. And then another woman, Allie McPhee, who talked about the different monthly cycles yearly cycle and lifetime cycle of a woman and how right. we have to match that and honor it. And I'm like you, I feel like, holy, do women have to wake up and quit ignoring this and quit totally. thinking that it's something to be suppressed because we're tell we're being told everywhere, S plug it, suppress it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, like pretend it's not there. You yeah. know, we're shamed if we're on, if we're bitchy or if we're on our period or we're too emotional. And I'm, I've learned that our emotional time during our premenstrual is is quite real and it's because it's accurate. <laughs> it's accurate. And then we just don't have the ability to shut it down like we normally can at the other parts of our cycle. And right. that actually these are our true feelings, right? Like totally. People will think, oh, I'm just PMSing or whatever it is. Totally. Yeah. And then diet as well. Like I always tell women in the beginning, the, the first half of your cycle is a great time to do intermittent fasting or, or full day fasting and yeah. you feel good and energetic. And it's really easy not to eat really mm -hmm. when you're like a couple days into your period and up until like the 14th day. Yeah. Eat lightly. <laughs> eat lightly and eat yeah. really well because it's easy at that yeah. time. And then the last half of your cycle, your body yeah. actually calls out for more carbs, which is why you yeah. start to crave the sugar. And we should listen to that. It's because our serotonin's dropping and yep. carbohydrates will help to boost our serotonin levels. So it's all yep. happening for a reason. Like eat the dark yeah. chocolate, ladies. I know. I know. <laughs> well, it's funny too. Like if you, in our book, The 28 Days Later Diet, we were saying how salty potato chips, really salt, salt stuff, salt everything it's right at that, you know, PMS premenstrual. We crave a lot of salt. We crave the chocolate. We crave magnesium. There are, there are trace minerals that we are missing yes. and it's the body being like, yo, um, you know, yeah. let's go. And, I mean. um, 
So what you're craving is very interesting. I, when I work with my clients, I'm always like, I always ask them like, what do you crave? What are you craving lately? You know, if they crave a lot of seafood, I'm like, I really think they might eat iodine. They might yes. eat, you know, so it's like, there's lots of little things. And women also, when I say this in the book is that, you know, women have different makeups. There's a multivitamin for women and a multivitamin for men. It's because we are m- minerally different. Yes. We, and so, and also the fact that we lose menstrual blood, we're losing magnesium, we're losing minerals every month. So we need to replenish iron and magnesium and iodine and zinc and all of that. And um, so there's times where we really feel like we, we need more substance, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Women and men are really different like that. They're really different. Yeah. And I also, my husband you know, can eat anything anytime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. And you know, I also think that I, you know, this, I always say this, that my husband looks in the mirror and he is like, not bad, not bad. Like he looks lovingly at himself in the mirror. So does mine. Yeah. And I'm always like, "Hmm." like, and I will look at myself and be like, "Hmm." Woo, you gotta work on that. Oh, you, you know, you have a wrinkle here. You know, it's like, we're conditioned to be a little bit more critical. And, you know, like, you know, you know, some people in my extended family, I'm not going to name names, but their, their spouses are overweight men who are big men. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. They're just ex-football players. They're, right. <laughs> they're just they're big. big boned. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but if, a, if, a, if there was a female version, they would be considered, they'd be like whispering, oh, she's like, she needs to drop 20 pounds. She never lost the baby weight or whatever. There'd be some like judgment. Yes. And I'm always like, how can we can be a big guy? And then you're criticizing this woman who's <laughs> lovely and amazing. Yeah. So it's like, you see that double standard and it really gets into the psyche. And, you know, honestly, you have to defy a lot to, to, you know, have to defy a lot of the social norms to be happy as a woman. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. It's and- so true. Yeah. It is. My husband told me once that he's like, you know what? I've never looked in the mirror and thought something negative. Like I've never said to myself, oh, geez, I need to lose weight. And I mean, he's fluctuated up 30 pounds before. Like imagine if that was me, I yeah. would have just died. I would have just been hiding right. out. And he was just well, like, I- I've never said that to myself. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's so, it's so much more traumatic for women because we're judged. Yeah. We're, that's like, he, he will still, his, no one will, his like identity when he's at work, isn't going to be like, Oh, 30 pounds overweight, Joe. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's really, it's really, you have to sort of like block out a lot of, of social programming for sure. For sure. I mean, it's, it's, but I do think that's fascinating. I'm really analyzing that. <laughs> I'm analyzing that. I'll get back to you in another 10 years about the male, female difference with just my own family structure. We could learn from men. Let's put it that way. For, for, for once, right. we can learn from men for once. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just how to talk to ourselves when we're looking at ourselves and not be so critical, right? Yeah. And quit and just ignore the outside. But yeah, it is so funny because I see all the guys around me and they hit a certain age and they start packing on the weight and nothing said, nothing. It's just like, it's, it's the norm and women are out there getting tummy tucks and liposuction. And I don't see oh, yeah. men doing that. I know. <laughs> I know there is some, but let's be realistic here. Women are the majority of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's the truth. And, you know, we can, we can rise above it though. Like I really think we can rise above it and we, we can have it all. We can feel great wherever we are. And we can also just really find that hit that stride of, of, you know, natural weight release where we just find that ideal weight and we live there without a lot of suffering and strife and effort. Um, and I really believe that, like I call it utopian, you know, u- a utopian body where you're just like living the dream where I would say like the French women don't get fat. French women are a really good example to analyze how they are very sensual. They're really eating their food. They really taste the food. They don't deprive themselves. Um, but they're also very sporty and very active just naturally in their day. Um, I just find, I find that that book has a lot of, of merit too. The French women don't get fat. And it's part of it because they, they just live in balance. They just live in balance. And they also just, there's also in, in the French culture, 
there's many different versions of beauty. There's, you know, there's so many different looks and there's, they, you can be a little avant-garde and, you know, it's really interesting. So that's another thing is yeah. the French women don't get fat. Another book to read. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's great. And they, it's, it's not like they're spending half their day trying not to no, be fat. Yeah, exactly. They're living their life, you know? Yes. Yes. I always say we can, we shouldn't be mimicking even what our great, great grandmothers were doing, you know, where totally. they didn't obsess about, they didn't calorie count. They weren't doing any crazy diets. They were just totally. eating real food, not snacking yeah. all day and keeping and moving. And they didn't, yeah. weren't going to a gym. <laughs> right. Moving, right. Well, so, so that's exactly it. Like yeah. that's exactly it. They were also really much more connected to nature. There's a lot yes, of other were. subtle things. Yeah. They were really connected to the, 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 they had boundaries with their work. The sun went down, they went down. Yeah. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't like, so it's like they had Sundays where nothing was open and they just, you know, had that nurturing family, solitude, boring day, time yep. of day. I mean, there's, there's some real getting back to basics. That's, that's really healthy too. I, I agree. So before we wrap it up, <clears throat> what kind of advice would you give to the woman that is having a hard time exercising, you know, what, what do you say to those women when it comes to movement? Well, you know, I really believe that you should keep rolling the dice, so to speak, until you find something that you really enjoy. Yes. So, you know, just keep trying, trying things until you find something you really like. And it might be a person that you connect with. Um, you know, so that's one thing. But the second thing is really, really start to have uh, like five minutes of meditation every day and you'll start really feeling what's going on in your inner world. And then that can guide you. So honestly, the, the secret to movement is to not move and just be still. <laughs> and you know, I love it. it's, it's the paradox again, right? So I really believe that like three minutes, five minutes of just sitting preferably on the ground um, you can light a candle, you can light incense, you can just sit on the ground, no electronics around you, you know, five minutes and you can close your eyes or not, but just give yourself that time. At first it's going to be like, I've got so much to do. I have laundry to do. I have to make dinner. I have whatever, but give yourself five minutes. Um, and then from there you get all this Intel. I would say like you're a little FBI agent for yourself and you get all this really important Intel. And then and then you can act on that information. Um, so I, I really recommend that. I, you know, I work with some teenage girls that are in a drug rehab center um, and they take yoga very seriously at this drug treatment center. Great. And yeah, it's really, it's huge. And we always say, you know, they come into the yurt. We do yoga in this yurt in the woods. It's really hippy dippy. I love, I love it. it. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I'm like, you know, if you guys just take your shoes off and sit on a mat, you're doing yoga. <laughs> and it's like the beginning, the beginning of the rest of your life. And um, it sounds so dramatic, but it's so the truth. It's and then, so the truth. Yeah. So I say that to everyone, like it is related to finding that perfect weight yeah. and releasing all the stuff that you don't need. Is the, that's the beginning of it. That's the catalyst is sitting on the floor, <laughs> doing nothing and giving yourself that time to just connect. Yeah. Like I couldn't meditate, but I could do yoga. And for me, yoga was meditation. It was like yeah. mo moving meditation, right? And it, I couldn't never, I was, wasn't good at sitting still and meditating, but the yoga, I could totally drop in and meditate. It was amazing. And I, yeah. um, I look at women like you, can I ask how old you are? I'm 47. Okay. Yes. Well, because for those of you that are listening to the podcast, head over to my YouTube channel, The Other Side of Weight Loss, the links in the, in the show notes, and just, just look at Ellen. Because I have this thing where I know many yogi women that are, you know, 40 to 70 years old that have been doing yoga for a long time, and they all have a very specific look to them. And yeah. to me, it's just like <laughs> true beauty. Like there's just, it's such a natural beauty and the, you just have this energy and flow about you that I see across the board with women that do yoga consistently often, 
right? Thanks. And, and, I, and I strive for that. I strive for that look with my body and my energy and just, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's just, that's. I'm, well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I, cause I see it with, there's, um, you know, I have some yoga friends that, you know, are grandmothers and they, they're so content with who they are and they've aged without losing confidence. Yeah. And it's unique because a lot of times in our culture, that's another thing is there's, you know, so yoga helps you bring your awareness in and then you're like, damn, there's a lot going on. I am feeling really strong and it really empowers you. And then as you age, you don't lose confidence and you should actually, our ancestors, they gain confidence the you know look at the medicine women in the native americans yes. they were the badasses of the they tribe they were they were the wise women the wise women so we have to reclaim that as well we like we're you know we're getting we're getting we get more as we get older and we get richer as we get older and um you just have to hold on to who you are and don't let anyone mess with it and I do think that mind body movement, especially yoga, they really help you just embrace your truth. And, um, and it just, it really sticks with you. It really does. And it's related to weight release and weight loss because ultimately you'll love yourself so much. You won't abuse yourself. You won't overeat or undereat, and you won't do those irritating movements. You'll just be like, dude, I, my body's a temple and I, yeah. I'm going to like cherish it and nurture it. And it's a real game changer. It really, you know, that revolution from within is yeah. really, is really the key. It's the key to finding weight loss that's lasting and really peaceful. Like you didn't have to fight for it. It came to you, you know, yes. and it, and it's really, people aren't hearing that message enough, but it's true. I've seen it over and over again with my friends and clients and, and, uh, Yeah. 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 So you have an awesome membership where you actually have these, like you actually have classes on the membership, too, right? Yes. Like yes. Yoga, so on, is it yoga classes? Yes. It's an online okay. studio. It's, it's fusion. I call it fusion because we do a lot of everything, but it's always barefoot and nice. mindful. Um, and we have a new workout every month and I have fit tips and I have five questions with interviews with, with some of the people that are in the workouts with me. So you can kind of get to know them. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really proud of it. I feel like, again, like accommodating women is really what I care about most. And uh, we have 15 minute workouts, 45 minute workouts and everything in between. Um, and it's just like this 24 hour studio that's always open to you wherever you are. You can be in New Zealand and you can still, do a workout if you want, if you feel like you have the time and you have a lot to choose from. So that's on ellenbarrett.com. And, um, I'm really proud of it. And it's really, um, it's really, again, it's a feel good, feel good fitness. One of my mottos is you feel good, look great, and then shine bright. And so it's like that revolution from within. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to put the link in the show notes to ellenbarrett.com as well to the membership site. Um, it's, it's like five ninety five a month. Is yeah. It? Yeah. yeah. Super affordable. A month. I think that's so yeah. great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, we were, I was like, seriously, I was trying, I'm, we're, you know, we're trying to just offer something and create a community yeah. and there's no pressure. And, um, so yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ellen. I loved talking to you. We could probably talk for another couple of hours, but yes, <laughs> we could. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Karen.